Well, hello, hello. God bless you. It's Benita. Welcome to part three of Use a Pencil with an Eraser. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for this mini-series. We thank you that you are teaching us. You're opening our eyes to truth, God. You're helping us, Father God, to lay aside, Lord God, thought patterns and lay aside beliefs, Father, that are spiritually counterproductive that are carnal, that are fleshly in nature, God, and taking on the things of the Spirit. We thank you and praise you for deliverance and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Use that pencil. <laughs> We've been talking about expectations and talking about how we have to really kind of, we have to allow God, we need to really present our expectations to God and allow Him to let us know what we should be believing for it will help us to avoid being so um, disappointed with life and things that happen to us the last time we were talking we talked about a movement that um, you know kind of ran rampant really through the local assembly called um, the faith movement um, blab it and grab it claim it <laughs> you know name it and claim it that type of thing and that even though many people learned who they were have a, had a better perspective of who they were in the kingdom of God and learned that they were not just little poor pop, uh, paupers um, that we are sons and daughters of a king that the enemy really perverted that teaching and it got all through some um, through us as leaders and through us as congregants and so as a result of that, many of us um, kind of began to think that we could tell God what to do and completely um, ignore his sovereignty. Um, and that we learned that God is under no obligation to give us anything that's not within his will for our lives. And so we need to spend time seeking the face of God about what his will is. And then looking at the example of Jesus Christ, he shows us how to have a healthy relationship with God. And Jesus was always willing to lay aside what he wanted. And I mean, he had a very strong belief, um, you know, a very strong um, request um, um, as he was about to go on Calvary's cross he said no I don't really want to do this in the garden of Gethsemane he went to God three times and said please let this cup uh, pass for me and then he said but not your my will but let your will be done and that's what we've learned about the pencil that we don't go to God with a permanent marker about this is what I want and this is what I want but we go to God with a pencil we talk we let our requests be made known but we have to have the flexibility in case God's response is different from what we um, desire. So we're going to finish that. We're talking about that faith move movement and what happened um, when it got full blown in the body of Christ or in local assemblies. We had very focused, hardworking, diligent people who were fixed on building their lives, fixed on living out promises without God and his permission, without his consultation, without his intervention, and without his direction. And so people stopped asking God. They just started, you know, just um, talking about what it was that they wanted and, um, you know, and wanted God to do it, wanted God to um, cooperate with, with their will instead of our cooperating with his will stop asking God about his will and his purpose concerning their lives but you know they had these unbendable plans this is how I want my life to be this is when I want things to happen you know it had a lot of details about what we wanted and kind of shoved it in the face of God and said now do it you know like as if he was a spiritual genie which he is not <laughs> and so we kind of got things twisted we talked about um, you know that God somehow had um, an obligation to make us happy you know, um, you know, even though the scripture tells us that Jesus has um, come that we may have life and have that more abundantly, that isn't saying God, that's not God's number one goal. Amen. We're supposed to be spiritually productive and find our joy in the fact that we are in line with his will. Amen. 
Um, so we had a lot to learn from this. It says here um, in my notes that many people began having decreeing parties and fellowships. Um, they began to think of God like he was, again, as we talked about, some kind of genie in a bottle um, or some cheap errand boy, which he is not. Um, you know, it caused us to be blind, you know, to the will of God um, for our lives. We completely disregarded the very purpose of our existence. You know, some of us forgot that God was not made to be the dispenser of our pleasure. I'm going to say it again. God was not made to be the dispenser of our pleasure. No, actually, it's quite the contrary. We were created for him. The scripture in Revelation 4, 11 says, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you have created all things, and for your pleasure they are and were created. We were created for God's pleasure. God is not created, or God is not in existence, we'll say, I'm sorry. God is not in existence for our pleasure. I'll say it again. We were created for God's pleasure. God is not in existence for our pleasure. See, these are the kinds of truths that I had to acquiesce to. I had to embrace in my life to come out of an immature way of thinking. Because when I stayed in that immature way of speak, thinking, it was fertile ground for the enemy to drop thoughts in my mind that God was somehow mistreating me, that somehow I wasn't getting what I was supposed to get, that, you know, he loved someone else more than me. All those thoughts came in my mind when I was thinking about God in a perverted sense. It's not scriptural. And so that's how God says, my people, his people perish for lack of knowledge. Amen. It goes on and says that we use the word of God in a manner to fortify a perverted and unprofitable mindset. Instead of allowing the power of the word of God to untwist our worldly way of thinking. We took scriptures. We lifted scriptures out and we began to use them as evidence that God was supposed to just do what we wanted him to do. Some of us have unknowingly manipulated the word of God for our own benefit. And then we, some of us were taught to do that. And then some of us are frustrated because we tried to do that and we didn't get any kind of response from God. Okay, and so then we had an adult temper tantrum. <laughs> you know, we, oh, you know, you didn't do this for me, you don't love me, all that old type of stuff. Instead of realizing, hey, wait a minute, God never said I, he was going to do that. Okay, we're going to look at some of these scriptures. We took scriptures um, that said things like that, that God quickened the dead and he called those things which are not as though they were. So we started doing that. You know, I'm going to call this into existence. I'm going to release um, this promise. Yes, we do um, create an atmosphere with our mouths, but we do not. That scripture is not saying that we are just going to say, God, give me this and give me that, and I don't have that, but I'm going to call it into existence. No, if God, in other words, if God has told you that he is going to do something for you, listen to what I'm saying. He said he's going to do something for you, and you don't see it. Then we are released to use that scripture. I'm going to say, God, I'm going to thank you in advance. For the new home you showed me. Or that you told me to trust you. I'm going to tr trust you. And I'm believing in that. You told me that um, I, you're going to do certain things for me at a certain time. I'm believing in that. I'm calling that into existence. That just means I'm agreeing with what you say. Because we in and of ourselves, we don't have that. A lot of people have used different um, trains of thought that is that's contrary to that they're not operating we're not operating in the word of God when we do that we need to be careful about the origin of who's giving us that type of mindset we had other scriptures like Matthew 11 uh, Mark I'm sorry 11 23 so that said, for verily I say unto you that whatsoever you shall say to this mountain be removed, but you shall believe that those things which you have said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. 
So we use that scripture. I'm supposed, I can have whatever I say. No, it's whatever we say in accordance to God's will for our lives at that particular time. <laughs> Let me add that. It's whatever we say in agreement to what, what, what God said for our lives at that particular time. It's not just something I pull out of the sky because I want it. Come on, somebody. That's not the way things are done in the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of us. The kingdom belongs to God. He's the king. Amen. And though we are a royal priesthood, we're not the king. We're not the sovereign God. It's his plan being worked out and lived out in our lives. Okay, so we're not going to just be pushing him around and telling him what to do. And many people end up depressed because they did that. It did not work. And now they feel that they're shipwrecked. Or they said, God, I want this and it didn't come to pass. Now they're mad. I prayed and God didn't give it to me like he's a bubble gum machine. No, he is not. And these are the hardcore truths that I had to learn to keep me out of depression. So that when the enemy began to say all of this mess, God didn't do what you want. I can now say, no, his will was accomplished. Let his will be done and not mine. You see? So I'm able to, to lift up the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the enemy because I believe that God's will was done. But I can't do that when I think that God has a, a personal vendetta against me. I've been there. But it was because I took the word of God and made it say what I wanted it to say. Instead of rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? So most of the time it says here these scriptures have been craftily lifted out of context. They, 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 they are using it out of the way or beyond the way that the author who was inspired by the Spirit of God was using it at that time. What they were saying to those individuals at that time. Amen. It says here, so it's lifted up out of the context and used as a fruitless measure, a fruitless measure in an attempt to make God do what we desire. Now, you might say right there, hold it, Sister Benita. Doesn't the scripture say that if I delight myself in the Lord, that he will give me the desires of um, my heart in Psalms 37? I'm delighting myself. Oh, I'm happy in the Lord. 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 Now, give me what I want. <laughs> Woo! That's not what that scripture is saying. How do I know? Because I used to think that too. You can be happy in the Lord all you want and ask God for something. If it's not in his will, you're not getting it. Hello, not from him. Come on, somebody. But what does that scripture mean? This is why God called us to look deeper into the word of God. You're called to look deeper into the word of God to study. God, what are you saying? When you see contradictions like that, instead of getting mad at God, ask God. Oh, God, ask a question. God, I thought your scripture said this. I did that. It didn't work out. Tell me, explain to me, clarify. So I want you to listen very closely. Again, we're talking about the fourth verse in Psalm 37. It says, um, delight thyself in the Lord and he will give me the desires of my heart. All right. So the word delight in the Hebrew, which is the language, Aramaic and Hebrew language um, is was the language that the Old Testament was written in. And when you study that, the word delight in the Hebrew does not mean to take joy in. It doesn't mean it's like, whoop, 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 yeah, 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 I'm delighted myself. It doesn't mean that. Did you know that? I didn't <laughs> until I started studying, until I was shipwrecked. Come on, somebody. But instead, it means something delicate or soft. It means to be pliable. 
So the scripture is saying, be pliable in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Being willing to die to what you want, be pliable, be flexible, be surrendered, be tendered in the Lord, in our relationship with God. And then we will be able to receive or be granted or be given or infused with the will or desires that he has for our lives. Oh, goodness. He will give you, he will give you the desire because your heart now is tender and now he can begin to drop in a tender heart what his desires are. He'll give you the desire to be obedient. He'll give you the desire to do something for somebody. That's what it's saying there. He'll give you, maybe you're the kind of person, I remember when I just did not want to forgive. No, I was going to my grave, hating my husband. Going to my grave, I said it out loud. But God gave me, when I began to humble myself, and because I was being terrorized and tortured by the devil. Come on, somebody. And I humbled myself. When I humbled myself, God gave me the desire to want to forgive him. So that scripture is telling us when we are soft, when we are pliable, when we are flexible, then God will give us the desire. Now we can be in agreement with his will. Come on, somebody. So it says to this spirit that was cat, this spirit that captured the behavior, you know, have our, it's just reminiscent of us just getting our way when we're kids, doing what we want to do. But we have to realize as we begin to close right now that the God that we serve is sovereign. See, these are the hard truths that I had to learn that keeps me out of depression. Keeps me from having a bunch of adult temper tangents like I used to have all the time. Come on, somebody. God began to teach me. It's my way. You were made for me, Benita. You were made for my pleasure. Humble yourself. Be tender. Be pliable. And let me pour into you the desires that you need in order to please me. I just want to let you know I thank God for your presence. I pray that you were able to get something that blessed your heart from this series. Remember, use a pencil with an eraser when you begin to go to God with your desires. Your life is going to be a lot better. God bless you until we meet again. Love and kisses.